Good day and welcome to another exciting sport rap show. I am your host, Jesse Jackson Kaoraitha, unpacking the latest sports news. And now for your latest on the hit list. Well, the latest. Local boxer Jeremy Loki Nakatila today returned back from the USA following his fight against Mexico's Mitchell Beltrade. The Namibian returned to a hero's welcome after defeating the Mexican by six-round technical knockout, ending Namibia's poor run of results on American soil. An emotional Nakatila thanked the Namibian nation, including the MTC Nesta Sunshine promotions, for rallying behind him as he took on an experienced and dangerous boxer on foreign soil. Trainer and promoter Nesta Sunshine Tobias, on the other hand, also thanked their main sponsor MTC for making the trip possible. Our reporter Tilman Van Lil compiled this for us. Stay tuned. <laughs> Lester Tobias, once again, uh, congratulations on the excellent win of Loki in Las Vegas. What is your plans uh, forward for the next few months, uh, say a year or so? I know, thank you very much. Uh, well, it was a good achievement, a good victory for Namibia. You know, and uh, that opened door for, for Nakathira and for, of course for our boxers in the country also. Because when you achieve something like this, they want also to see who's, who's be, who, who did we left behind in Namibia. Meaning there's also other talent uh, in Namibia. If you've got someone who can show the world that you can do it, you fight on the, on the highest level, put up a great fight and put up and win also. The, the most important thing is to perform, but uh, win is a big bonus for us. And for sure now, it's a big, it's a big job for the promoter. I have to produce now and provide. Nakathira, the, the better fight, so he can also sustain himself and his family. For sure, boxing is a business, sport is business, uh, especially when you win a fight in Las Vegas. All the promoter want you, all the TV want you. Like this fight was on ESPN Live and it was watched worldwide. Yeah, so that's an achievement, you know. It's good for Namibia, you put Namibia on the world map, you're gonna attract investors to Namibia because most people now they know. Namibia. They're gonna look on the on the internet to see where's Namibia, and that's a good investment for Namibia. You know? So for now, we just go back to the gym. We're gonna do what we always do to pro, to, to put our box on the program. Yeah, we're gonna run the program. We just Nakatira now. We're gonna just get a better program and a better offer from overseas, international promoters, Europe, USA. But now, for now. We stick with top rank and we're just gonna wait for top rank what they're gonna tell us. Uh, Nestor, when is the next ranking uh, gonna be available for, for uh, Loki? No, no, now I see Loki, if you can see on a, on a box rank, he's on a number eight now, including the four, four, four champions and other things. So, for sure, he will be in the top five. Let me tell you, we're gonna be top five in all of boxing organization, the top four. We talk about the top four, that is the organized world organization. Everybody wants to fight for those titles. And Loki will be right in the top five of those organizations. Uh, Nestor, how long do you think will it take before Loki will have a shot at the world championship? No, no, uh, he can get it anytime, you see. For now, he's just gonna, he's just gonna take a break. And then after after two weeks, we're gonna come back to the gym, and we're gonna work and and wait, and we're gonna put our proposal to organization, to the promoters, because because uh, you see now the the lightweight is uh, the top top guys there. You got uh, George Campososo, you got uh, uh, you got uh, Vasily Lamacheco, uh, you know you got uh, David Tank, you know you got uh, David Henny. You see, it's a lot of. Uh, uh, you got uh, this young kid from uh, uh, Garcia, Golden Golden Boys. Yeah, you got so a lot of boxers. All those guys are top top. You see, every TV channel want to broadcast those fights. Then of course you got Nagatira. Nagatira is right there, you know. And uh, and everyone, I know they're gonna start a try to await him now because you know Africa, our well, advantage. You see, it's also a disadvantage for us not to get marketed. But uh, now our advantage is. They don't know. They don't know your style. They cannot copy your style. Now, after they saw his style, they saw how he, how, how, how hard he can hit. How good is a, how good is a, a boxer? 
So that's going to be difficult for us to secure a good fight. But with a, with a good promoter like uh, Bob Aram of Top Rank, we can get uh, any fight we want. Esther, thank you very much and good luck. Thank you very much. Jeremiah Loki Nakatila back from Las Vegas giving Mitchell what's it? Virtual. Yeah, uh, Mitchell, hiding. Mitchell, yeah. How was the fight? Uh, look, it, it, it looked easy on TV, but uh, people can believe it wasn't that easy. How was the fight? Yeah, the, the fight, you know, in general, it was a tough fight. You know, that was a you know world class fight, and then uh, you know, Pitcher had been uh, a world champion, oh, I think, almost for five years, and then he's a tough guy. And, and uh, for me, you know, I just handle and make it look easy, but it was indeed a tough fight. Yeah, so I, you know, I just, I just, I'm just happy, you know, overcome a tough challenger or a tough opponent like Miguel. So just to test myself that, you know, I can do it, I can, uh, you know, I can compete at the high level, at the A level, and I belong to the A level. Uh, any hidden plans, secret plans for the for the future, near future? Yeah, you know, the, you know, we still have to go sit with my promoter, Nesta, and then uh, see the way forward. And uh, for now, maybe take a week just to rest. And then uh, again, uh, I know, I know this is gonna be a bigger year for you, for me. So that's why I have to prepare. I mean, I have to be ready at all times. Even now, I just take a week just to rest and then be back at the gym. And then I know, you know, we, we just start, this is the beginning of the year. You know, we are still in March, so I still have a bigger year ahead. So I'm looking forward to bigger fights, you know, this year. And then I want to make my country proud, you know, just for, in general, to, to, put, to, to show that the Namibian boxing belongs to the A-level. Jeremiah Loki Nakatila, thank you once again and congratulations once again. Thank you, thank you. Welcome back. Well, Loki Nakatila, the lightweight boxer in celebratory mood there. Um, it was a very job well done for the Namibian who actually managed to overcome what many have not been able to do. That's on American soil. On to the next one. Sport Turf Namibia managing member Rene Trot says they still remain in pursuit of rebuilding the independent stadium even after the Ministry of Sport has issued a tender for the renovation of the stadium. Limonta Sport of Italy and locally owned Namibia Sport Turf have revealed that they have completed their proposals to revamp the Independence and Vineta Stadium. The company which recently offered the Ministry of Sport free consultations for the stadium are also ready to meet the government for further talks. And to the next one. The Katutura Sports Union Chairman Kuveri Shonga has expressed his gratitude towards football clubs and fans for having kept the union alive. The Kasu Chairman believes that local sports in the heart of the capital city has taken a steady improvement even after it was affected by the coronavirus pandemic which halted activities. The Chairman felt that the response from the public and teams in general has given him hope that football and netball activities hosted by the union will continue to shine bright. Our legendary golden oldies segment awaits us on the other side of the break. Stay tuned. your flex package with Paratus today. Sign up for ultra-fast fibre with the convenience of mobile LTE. That's two products in one bundle. It's new, it's one bill, and you can stay connected in more than one location. For more information, visit paratus.africa forward slash na.
Welcome back. Well, former Brave Warriors and African star skipper Ronald Himekwakeshire says playing against players like Sadio Mane and Kama Billiard always proved to be a tough task given the role they occupied. Well, he also speaks about some of the players that he actually enjoyed playing with and playing against during his time. Remember Keshire, who was studying that law in the, at the University of Pretoria, also played an inv influential role for the club during his stay there, as well as for the Brave Warriors, and that's his club, African Stars. Sport Rep caught up with a renowned lawyer and former skipper in a lengthy interview. Enjoy. Well, Sport Rep is here in Master Ronald Keshire's office, that's Himeshua. Former captain. <laughs> Sorry, captain. Um, okay, former captain of the Brave Warriors and, and as well as African Stars. Um, well, I'm sure many knows you, but they definitely don't know um, some of the most important encounters or uh, battles you have um, faced. Um, so, first of all, what I will take you through is just tell us um, what do you think was the best game you've ever played in your career? Best game. <laughs> I think uh, my best game was against Sundance um, at um, the University of Pretoria Football Stadium. And uh, if my memory serves me well, I think that was around 2013. Mm -hmm. And I was also nominated man of the match um, uh, during that game. Um, I think it's one of, uh, I mean, it's a game that stands out. Yes, I do. I do recall <laughs> that game. You were, you were phenomenal in that game. Um, for the national team, is there perhaps any that you might pick and say um, that day I was really at the best of my <laughs> ability? Uh, of course, I think uh, I, I played a good game uh, at the same Yoma Stadium. That was now during the AFCON qualifiers of, uh, for the 2019 African Nations Cup. And that game was against uh, Guinea-Bissau, I think. I think it was... Uh, I, I still have a video. Um, uh, I think I had uh, one of the good games as well. Um, and uh, it also stands out. Um, I, I, detect, I mean, I dictated the play in the middle of the park. Short passes, long passes. I think it was a great game, although we, we did not get the desired result of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter Shabulile, Hendrik Somaip, uh, they were very wasteful that day. We <laughs> wasted a number of good chances mm -hmm. and uh, we left it uh, uh, a bit too late for, for, for qualifying. Mm -hmm. So we had to now to go and struggle against Mozambique home in the way and so forth. And uh, you remember the last game? Uh, in Zambia, it was also a disastrous game. Uh, we were hammered in, in Lusaka in Zambia. So I think the game against Guinea-Bissau presented a very good chance of us, uh, having qualified already in advance and not wait until the last game. Okay, um, that was now the Brave Warriors, the University of Pretoria. Um, home, I want to take you home as well. I know that it is Salile, everything. I'm sure no fan would want you not to answer anything on Salile. So tell us about your, probably the best game you played in a Salile outfit. Yo, yo, yo. Stalile. I'm sure there were many. <laughs> there were so many of them, man. But of course, uh, you know, stars played also uh, uh, at the African, uh, at the continental level. Um, and uh, the game that will stand out for me will be a game in Joburg um, at Orlando Stadium against Orlando Pirates. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I had a point to prove since I came back home. Now I was presented again with a platform to say, yeah, here is South Africa again. So. I think I had a, a brilliant game as well. I can recall I have a, a good number of passes, even the through ball uh, to Panduleni Nekundi that I, I thought, had he been mm -hmm. on top of his game, he would have scored. He would have scored that one. It took a bit longer than I expected for him to have that shot and goal. Mm -hmm. So it was it was one of the good games as well that I can recall. Another game uh, is a game against Blue Water where I scored a cracker. 
Uh, I remember that game. I, I was even recorded yes. for the first time. Sent off. I sent off for the first time in, Must my, discipline. <laughs> in my entire career. Yeah. And uh, it, it was so, it was an unnecessary red card. Uh, I'm sure if, if, if we were at a professional level at the time, uh, the club could have actually find me. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, but the good thing is that uh, I scored that one goal and uh, we, we defeated Blue Waters yes. um, with that uh, single goal. Yeah. Okay, with that said, um, the position you always played was quite a very crucial position um, in terms of the engine room. You were the engine of any team that you had to represent at that time. But I'm sure there are always those players that makes a match very difficult for you um, in order for you to dictate play and control the game. So um, in your career, um, is there perhaps one player you would look again and say, damn, this guy gave me a hard time? <laughs> yeah, actually there are a number of those uh, sort of players um, that gave me uh, nightmares. Um, one of those players uh, would be obviously Sergio Mane, mm -hmm. um, because uh, those are the sort of players that play more in the pockets. You don't know whether the, that player is part of the midfield of the opponents, or he, is he an attacking player or a striker that needs to be taken care of mm -hmm. by my defenders. Mm -hmm. So there was always that confusion. Mm -hmm. I would remember a Kama billiard would play the same role. He would drop into those pockets mm -hmm. and then make runs from deep. Mm -hmm. Now, we, my coaches at Amatas would have a go at me when mm -hmm. Billiard made that run. Mm -hmm. And then, hey, hey, track the runner. Mm -hmm. I'm like, but I have other four guys behind me. <laughs> They're supposed to take care of this guy. Mm -hmm. uh, Bennett Parker played a very smart player. Mm -hmm. He played the same role as well. Those are the players that uh, actually given gave you, yeah. Uh, that one you would say that uh, they were quite tough. Um, one of the things also, as a midfield player, I'm sure there is a player that you, every time you play with, or you would love to play with that player every time because you know that you can rely on him. I'm sure you can rely on a team. <laughs> it's definitely as a team you can rely on the whole team. Yeah. But who is that player you? Would you would say that shoulder to shoulder or probably in a team you were always com comfortable and confident that he will pull up? Yeah, throughout my career, of course, I, I would look at a player like... Uh, is it in the middle of the park? <laughs> yes, anywhere. Outside. Anywhere, alongside you, anywhere. A player, probably sometimes, maybe, let me, okay, let me not put you on that <laughs> tough spot. I would say a player you have enjoyed partly Maybe you came to play partly with them or a player that you saw or watched or you would love to play with? Sure. I, I, I played with a number of uh, <laughs> good players. Mm -hmm. um, I, I will mention uh, Yamuno Andu mm -hmm. I will mention a player like uh, Quinton Jacobs. Uh, the few times when I played with uh, in African Stars, Colors. You will point out that a player like Ruti Low, Robert Pagnone, Ricardo Shuro, very reliable wing back, mm -hmm. a Chris Kashuqua when you have him at the back there, mm -hmm. a Nananias Gephardt, a Wangu Gome. Well, as you, a you, you, you have, you have, I'm sure I can see where you, I, that's why you were. Hendrix of my yeah. he is playing in front of you. Whenever you have the ball, he, mm -hmm. he is available, he wants the ball. So no. those are, uh, uh, the list goes on. No, that's why, I think that's why you're a skipper. That's why you actually, you were actually a captain, because... Uh, a Peter Chablé would be playing that yeah. ball into the channel. Yeah. A Benson Chicago holding up the play. Yeah. Look, yeah, it uh, it's, football it's, uh, it's a dynamic game. Uh -huh. So every player had that special contribution towards the game. Uh, that one would miss in a certain game to say, if, 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 if that specific player was there, he could have done A, B, C. Okay. So, uh, the list goes on. Goes on. You will have a Masa, a Uganda, a Teboho Monyai, a Peto Wanibi that will guide you every time. Mm -hmm. uh, sticker left, sticker right, you know, closing those passing lines. Mm -hmm. So, 
they they uh, as I said, they each quite player enough. brought something to the table, and you will always appreciate what the next player always contributed, and how he, and how we complemented each other. Definitely, and, and that's why it's a team sport. We we need those. We need to complement each other. Okay, definitely. Um, one message before we conclude. Um, you are now a lawyer by profession, and I signed here. I meant your offices. <laughs> uh, it's quite a different scenario from the field, but definitely it's because of education. So just one phrase to encourage players, current players, and probably the generation in terms of what to do to balance um, between studying and actually playing football or any other sport that they're taking part in. Yeah, that, that phrase to me has always been that education is the greatest equalizer, as they say. Um, because uh, it, it brings everyone at a par, it brings everyone at that level, at a certain level in terms of, uh, I mean, uh, in terms of opportunities uh, that are presented once you have obtained that qualification, you will stand a good chance with somebody that grow maybe in a rich family because of your qualification. Um, so, what, what I always tell the young players is that, of course, football or the talents that they have, be it athletic, football, tennis, whatever it is, they, they must not neglect their studies, they must make time for their studies, because, as we know, sports careers are very short, even in Hussein Bolt, who was shining, uh, yeah, it's all done. And it's all done, done and dusted. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, he might have invested well because he made a lot of good money. But uh, in, 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 from an African perspective, especially in a Namibian perspective, we, we there's uh, so much. I mean, there's very little mm -hmm. in so far as sport is concerned. In, in so far as investment into sport is concerned, mm -hmm. so I always encourage players. Of course, you can play your football. But please make time for your books. Ensure that you are on top of your game as far as your studies are concerned, because you will never live a day to regret. All right. Thank you so much. That <laughs> was Himekwa Ronald Keshire. Well, um, guy, the lawyer. If you need help, he <coughs> present you as well. Thank you so much. No thanks. Cheers. That was our legend for this week. He made quite a share, um, quite a very, very happy, happy man. Um, we'll go for a break, and after the break, Ari Ohart is on standby with international news. That's your club trotting. <laughs> Good day everyone, it's time for international sports news and we start off with the cricket news in the World Cup of uh, Women, 50 over World Cup in New Zealand that's being played at the moment. Uh, lots of excitement there, the semi-finals going to take place. Australia play against the West Indies and South Africa play against England. And uh, news from the tournament, news from the Australian camp is that the all-rounder of Australia, Alison Perry, won't be able to play against the West Indies. Uh, she's injured, uh, she's got a back spasm and uh, she won't be able to play against the West Indies probably be replaced by the all-rounder, 20-year-old all-rounder, 
uh, Annabelle Sutherland. Uh, Sutherland also played in the previous game of Australia um, and uh, Australia the big favourites in this tournament, uh, they the pre-tournament favourites as well. They were unbeaten in uh, the round robin phase of this tournament. The other semi-final uh, that will be played against England and South Africa and England of course is the defending champion and um, it is also a repeat of the 2017 semi-final uh, when South Africa lost against England. Other cricket news, and that is from the men's division, is uh, that uh, lots of pressure building up on the uh, England uh, captain, that is Joe Root. Uh, Joe Root's been captaining England for quite a while, for about four or five years, and uh, he had uh, not good results the past series. As he, they lost against the West Indies. Uh, the series loss was 1-0 now in the West Indies, and before that, Australia also beat England in the Ashes by four tests to nil. It is a former captain of uh, England, that is Michael Vaughan, that uh, made its statement uh, publicly. He said that he suggests that uh, Joe Root step down. The reason for that is that uh, England is winless in their last nine games and uh, since um, and they only won one of their past 17 tests. Now we continue with uh, tennis news and it's news from the Miami Open that's taking place in Florida. Men and women playing in a tournament and in the men's division. Uh, news from there is that Daniel Medvedev needs to win the next two games and then he will be world number one again overtaking Novak Djokovic. It was Medvedev uh, in the round of 32 that played against Pedro Martinez of Spain. He beat him by 6-3 and 6-2. He will next play Jensen Brooksley of the USA who beat Roberto Ogue from uh, Spain. And uh, if uh, Daniel Medvedev reaches the semi-final of this tournament, he will be the new world number one. In the women's uh, division, the new world number one, Iga Swiatek of Poland, she continued with a good form. She played against the young uh, American Coco Goff and she beat her by 6-3 and 6-1. And also through in the tournament is Naomi Osaka and uh, she beat Alison Risk of the USA by 6-3 and 6-4. Now on to some soccer news and Manchester United still looking for a new coach and uh, they, the interim coach of Manchester United soccer team at the moment, Rolf Regnick of Germany, is only in that position till July. Speculation of two coaches that might be in line for the new coach of Manchester United. The first one is uh, Eric Ten Hag. He is uh, from, at the moment, the coach of Ajax Amsterdam. And uh, the other coach that uh, might be considered as the new Manchester United coach is uh, Mauricio Potec uh, Potecini of uh, Paris Saint-Germain. It is Mauricio Potecini of uh, PSG. So those are the two front runners At the moment, it seems like Eric Ten Hag of uh, Ajax Amsterdam is a favourite to be the new coach, but uh, that is still in the process. Uh, they must still appoint the new coach. And to conclude, it is golf news uh, and the uh, uh, Masters, uh, the US Masters will start on the 7th of April. That is the second big major of the, uh, the year on the um, golf, the men's golf tour. And uh, news from the Valero Texas Open is that many players will play in the Texas Open this week in preparation for the Masters next week. Uh, the biggest uh, name that will play there is the defending Masters champion, that is Hideki Matsuyama from Japan. And he's been injured for a month and a half and he makes his comeback in the Texas Open that will start this week in uh, San Antonio in Texas. Other high profile players that will play in the Texas Open in preparation for the Masters is uh, uh, Rory McIlroy. He haven't played in that tournament for eight years. Um, and then also it will be Bryson DeChambeau. He, uh, the last time he played in the Texas Open before the Masters was uh, in 2017. Like I said, the Masters start at the, on the 7th of April. That's international sports news for now. We talk again tomorrow. All the best. Bye-bye. Thank you, Ari. That is all we had for you from the Sport Rep crew. Catch us again live tomorrow, same time, same place. Goodbye.